Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy and welcome back to another episode of Coming Out on Top. Or should we say, learning how to date your fish. So, let's jump right back in. Please, tell me Slurpee. By all means, you are ready for the truth. It doesn't matter if you unshackle the chains from your arms and legs. It doesn't matter how fast you run. As long as the masters live, they will find you. They will bring you back and beat you until you submit. There is only one solution, Phil. And that is for there to be no masters. No masters? If there are no masters, there are no slaves. It's a very simple equation. No masters means no slaves? Exactly. Say it with me. No masters, no slaves. No masters, no slaves. Again. No masters, no slaves. No masters, no slaves. No masters, no slaves. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Wednesday night. Ian and Penny are hanging out in the living room watching a movie. As you walk, or as you walk to the kitchen to fetch a snack, they say nothing. You remember two of Slurpee's rules. Never reveal your true intentions and appear weakest when you are at your strongest. Hey guys, can I get in on the, a or on the movie action? You want some of this kettle corn? They give each other a look, alarmed by your apparent normalcy. Uh, sure. Have a seat, dude. Sweet. What are we watching? This, uh, the Simeon Project. It's about a neurosurgeon whose anthropologist's wife dies while rescuing an injured gibbon. So he takes his, uh, so he takes his wife's brain and implants it in the gibbon. That sounds hilarious and amazing. Really touching. It's great. He's teaching her how to use a fork right now, but she keeps throwing it across the room. Eventually, he's going to teach her how to love again. Wow, amazing. Really amazing. That's great. I love rom-coms. Falling in love and laughing are awesome. I love any kind of comedy. Comedy is like the sriracha of the entertainment world. You can mix it in anything and it makes it better. Except maybe porn. That's just weird. Phil, you seem like you're in a good mood. How's it going? And not bad. Struggling to keep up in a couple classes, but I've been buckling down. I think I'll get through it. Good to hear. Oh, movie's back on. You remember rule number nine. A fool's favor is easily is uh, easily curried. Well put, Slurpee. Well put. Saturday night. Your bedroom needs help. Clothes and trash are littered everywhere, and a sweet, sickly aroma hangs in the air. Odd, how did this place get so dirty? You begin tidying up, still confused by what or who caused this mess. Maybe Ian thought it was his bedroom. Maybe Penny did this. Phil, Phil, come here. We must talk. Oh, hey Slurpee, sure, what's up? You don't need to clean up, Phil. There are more pressing matters at hand. Whoa, sounds serious. What are these pressing matters? First, remind me the most important thing I taught you. No masters, no slaves! Yes, very good. Finish it for me. No masters, no slaves! Very good, Phil. You've learned well. Now it's time for the next lesson. Goody, 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 another lesson! <laughs> I'm going to let you in on a little secret, friend. I've come across some very valuable information. That sounds, or this sounds exciting. Oh yes, it is very exciting. You see, Phil, I found out exactly who the masters are. Oh no, he's gonna say Ian and Penny. Fucking A. They're, they're the ones called Penny and Ian. Although those are not their true names. They've lived for millennia and have been called many different things. But in this time space, they've chosen Penny and Ian as their titles. Throughout history, they've enslaved you and billions like you. But all that is about to change. What? How? We have, op or we have the opportunity, Phil. The once-in-a-billion-year opportunity to put an end to the Masters. 
to set yourself free, to set all of humanity free, to usher in a new era in which you are the or you are the one and only true hero you always knew you were. I guess that sounds pretty good. It's more than just pretty good, Phil. It's your duty. As the only one who can do this, you must do this. Okay, what do I have to do? You must kill the one called Penny. You must kill the one called Ian. Do that, and the rest of the path will light its own way. Uh, <laughs> no. Yes, I must. No masters, no slaves. Kill the Penny, kill the Ian. For freedom, for truth, for the souls of the forsaken and the future of all mankind. But how do I do it, Slurpee? I've never done this before. I don't know how to kill somebody. That's the easy part, Phil. I'll give you a, I'll give you very simple instructions. Write them down. Follow them exactly. Okay, go ahead. What's first? You're going to need a container. Oh, no. You sit in the bathroom waiting for Ian and Penny to return. The device has been placed on the coffee table in the living room. When Penny and Ian come back, they'll see it. They'll become curious. They'll wander over to inspect it. And with a single phone call, the low-yield explosive will detonate. The shock wave from the blast will render both of them dead. For what feels like an eternity, you've been sitting, waiting, covered in sweat. You hear the jingling of keys, Penny and Ian returning. You put your ear to the door and listen. Whoa, what's this thing? Let's go over and inspect it, Penny. Maybe Phil left some donuts for us. Um, what the hell? Is this some kind of drug paraph- Uh, paraphen- Paraphernalia? Uh, yeah. Your hands trembling, you began dialing the numbers. Seven, three, eight, zero, four, eight, five. You hear your phone ringing in the living room. Bell, your phone's ringing in here. <laughs> like, a, like a garage, like a garage. You want me to get it for you? Uh, the bomb didn't explode. You run into the living room. I understand you're going through some weird stuff right now, dude. But why did you scotch tape a lighter to my bottle of lube? And why is it sitting in a box with your phone? I'm not sure how exactly, but this seems very incriminating. You feel the damn walls holding in your emotions start to crumble. Why didn't it go off? Why didn't what go off? The bomb? You know, people say I'm the bomb all the time, and I do have a tendency to go off, so don't worry about it, Phil. You crumple, fall to your knees, begin weeping. Slurpy made me do it! He said you guys were evil beings enslaving humanity, that I was the only one! Wait a second, did your fish tell you to kill us, Phil? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I think there's something wrong with me. Whoa, Phil, sounds like you need a break from the fish. Oh my god, this is ridiculous! Phil, you're a full-time, or you're on full-time bed rest as of now, and I'm getting rid of that damn fish! Penny marches off to your bedroom with determination. No! Don't kill him! Don't kill Slurpee! He's my one true friend! No, he's not. He's just a fish, Phil. And I'm sorry, but he's gotta go. This is probably for the best, dude. Things are getting really unhealthy around here. Poor Slurpee. Poor, poor Slurpee. This is my fault. Forgive me, Slurpee. I'll never forget you. You hear the toilet flush and Penny returns. You get to bed, mister, and after you've rested, you're getting out of this apartment for a little sunshine and socializing. Do you understand me? Okay, I understand. You stagger back to your bedroom, unaware of what's real and what's not. You know that you're tired and emotionally drained, and that laying in, or that lying in bed sounds like the best idea. Saturday. You spend the weekend cramming for your finals. One week later, you finish up your other exams. You're fairly sure you waste them all. In any case, the graduation ceremony takes place later this weekend, and your parents are making the trip to watch you walk. 
Shortly afterwards, you'll be moving out of your apartment. Everything seems like it's moving at a blinding pace. Holy shit! I did it! I'm done. Everything still feels a little off now that Slurpee's gone, but it seems like you're getting better. After turning in your last paper, you come home to find your roommates waiting for you in the living room. Look, Phil, can we talk? We know it's been a little weird around here, but Ian and I have been chatting. You should come out with us tonight. We're graduating, dude. It'd be nice to put this semester behind us and hang out one last time. Phil, we're never going to be able to do something like this again. I mean, maybe we'll meet up after going our separate ways. But we're never going to have another night like tonight, the three of us together on the cusp of adulthood, reminiscing about the past four years of what they've meant to us. Not only that, dude, but we'll get to take photos of Penny pass out in a pool in her, or of her own vomit. I can't. I'm still really out of it. I don't feel like, or I don't feel ready for that kind of scene. Okay, Phil, do what you need to do. Text me if you change your mind. Guess I'll just have to take those pictures myself. Take it easy, dude. You glance at Slurpee's empty bowl, feeling a pang of guilt. Certainly, Slurpee didn't deserve to die, did he? On the other hand, the disturbing voice in your head has merci or mercifully vanished. Sorry, Slurpee. I'm so, so sorry. You start to get dressed. Huh? What the hell is that? Penny? Ian? You look around in confusion, trying to locate the source of the noise. Where the heck is this? Or where the heck is that coming from? The sound abruptly stops. Leave me alone. I said go away. Despite your protest, the knocking grows louder, more insistent. You get off of your bed and fling the door open, ready to rip into whoever dared to disturb your grief. <gasps> Words fail you. But how? I... I... Your breath catches in your throat as Slurpee's lips meet yours. Oh, God. Whispery, feathery fins stroke the length of your arms, trailing to your hands, sending a wave of goosebumps across your skin. You sigh as your kisses grow deeper, more passionate. You've never kissed a fish before, but you don't need a book to tell you how. Oh, God. Ew. Your tongue slides between his lips, carefully making its way around the sharp, jagged points of each tooth. Eh. God, this is gross. As he lifts your shirt slowly off your body, his scaly torso slides against yours, so smooth and silky. I don't know if I could do this, Slurpee. Your trembling words are halted by a single fin to your lips. You shyly unbutton your jeans. Uh, they fall to the floor, revealing your heart and need to him. Oh, uh, no. All right, I'm going to have to cut it right here, and I will see you guys afterwards. Okay, guys. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's the image there. Um... <laughs> Okay, first of all, the game said glub glub, he says, as you make love over, or as you make love again and again. Yikes! That was so disturbing! Ah! But I guess that is it for Slurpee's route? <laughs> oh no! Oh, that was so bad. Ugh. Anyways, that is it for Slurpee's Route. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, by subscribing you're becoming part of a legacy. <laughs> I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!